Laura. Good morning, Laura. It's good to see you. Yeah. Um, on Monday, we talked to you about making good choices at restaurants and the you know the idea of calling ahead. And there's a lot of places that are starting to um, you know provide vegan options, mm. and a lot of places where the staff is really knowledgeable. And when you yeah. ask them, you know, what's available, what can be tweaked, what can be you know made vegan, they call it veganizing. Um, a lot of places are, are really good about that now, so you could definitely do that. Also, if you go on the website, a lot of places you can email them and say, hey, we're vegan, we're coming, what can we do? Right, and we talked about a place that we went to last weekend. Last weekend, I think so. Yeah, last weekend. Um, that was basically a steakhouse. So, um, and we said we were vegan, and, and not only did they come in, but the waiter knew. Like, he was like, on He it. was making adjustments. Okay, well, you'll have to do this for this, you'll have to do that for that, and... And basically, boom, there it was. And he wasn't even like upset about no, it. No, he just, he just went like, right okay, into, okay, I know exactly what to do. Um, and, you know, we talked about how a lot of times you can get vegetables, but you have to ask them not to cook them in butter. The one thing that, you know, because we are plant-based, we try to avoid oil when we can. We know when we're going to go out that there's going to be oil. And mm -hmm. that's just something that we accept when we go out. There are people in this lifestyle who are adamant that no oil, and they make restaurants adjust to that as well. Um, we aren't there yeah. right now. That doesn't mean we never will be, but that's not where we are right now. Right. I think that's a harder move for a restaurant because... They don't know how to cook without, without oil. oil. Right, yeah. exactly. They just don't have any idea. Um, but you can. Um, they will, will accommodate you. I know there are people who bring their own salad dressings to restaurants. And sometimes restaurants will kind of push back on that a little bit. But you basically can tell them, look, either I can buy a salad and you can keep your salad dressing and I'll use my own. Or I can sit here and not buy anything. Like mm -hmm. So I think most of them will let you do that. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's not if, if somebody complains, it's probably the staff member that's complaining and not the restaurant. You know, because right. I mean, a restaurant wants your business. I mean, they want you to consume the alcohol. They want you to buy. I mean, they're very. They should be very happy to charge you the price of a salad when all you're really eating is a salad and not their dressing. Not their dressing. So their overhead goes way down. I mean, you know, it just, goes down. It yeah. does. Yep. On Tuesday, we talked about calcium supplements, and we told you that the risk of taking calcium supplements is that your heart attack heart attack risk goes up, mm -hmm. and that's because the um way that calcium supplements work is they flood your body with calcium, whereas when you get it via your food, it kind of goes in over time, so it's not quite as abrupt. And having that much calcium in your blood causes your blood to clot faster, which means that if you are at risk to have a heart attack, taking a calcium supplement can make it worse. Now, that said, A, if you are not plant-based, and your doctor has you on a calcium supplement for a reason. Don't stop taking it without right. having a conversation with them. And that's, I want to say, and that's true with all supplements. So we don't take supplements and we preach not to take supplements, but... If your doctor has you on one for a reason, yes. hey Valerie! Hey Valerie, good morning. Um, because you know maybe you're on a medication or you have something that causes calcium to leach from your system, don't stop taking it without talking to your doctor. Now, taking animal protein causes acidity. We've talked about that before, and your body uses calcium to offset that acidity, which means if you're taking in animal protein, you need more calcium because your body has to try and not be acidic. And it can cause, when you when your body does that, what it does is it pulls it from your bones and it pulls it from your muscles. So it, it, they're thinking now that the muscle loss and the bone loss isn't a normal part of aging. It's a part of aging as you protect your body from eating animal protein. Right. And that's also why getting your calcium from dairy products is kind of a catch-22 because it's loaded with animal protein, which is raising your acidity, which is leaching calcium, and then it has some calcium in it. So just don't eat the don't eat the dairy and get your calcium from other places. So green leafy vegetables, um, beans, all kinds of fun stuff. Prunes. So prunes help build bones, and almonds um, reduce the breakdown of right. bones. I was gonna say a lot of nuts have a lot. Mm -hmm. calcium too. Yep. They, they always say that the um, walnut is like the perfect nut if you're not allergic to it. Um, I'm allergic to walnuts. We eat pecans because she is allergic to walnuts. So yeah, calcium supplements definitely de have risks. If you want to know more about those risks in detail, I have several pages of notes here. We talked about it on Tuesday. You can go back and listen to the talk on Tuesday. I won't get into all those details now. Mm -hmm. um, on Wednesday, we talked about the um, unconscious emotional relationship that everyone, all humans, that we have with food and where that comes from. And we talked about how the reason that you have an emotional attachment to food, especially foods that you ate as a child, is because you have um, an emotional attachment to whoever your caregiver was, in most cases um, a mother or a father. 
Hey, Deborah. Morning, Deborah. Good morning. It's good to see you. And that emotional attachment and that reliant, 100% reliance on your parent figure meant that you felt like everything that they did for you was perfect That's, you know, when you were a child. And that gets embedded into your subconscious brain. And so then as you age, yes, you realize like your prefrontal cortex matures and you realize, okay, parents were just basically trying to keep you alive. Um, you realize that, but that overlays that unconscious they were perfect and so the things that our parents fed us and I talked about some of the different things that um, I have an aunt that made a really great uh, dish that I loved and a, my grandmother made some my great-grandmother made something and you get emotional attachments to those and so I invited you to observe your emotional attachment to food and we talked about making the unconscious conscious I posted a video um, about it on the uh, community page about starting to recognize the decisions you make and then how can you feel the emotion and the love and the support and the kindness without actually having to ingest the food? Yeah. And part of that is being able to recognize that it's happening. And so many people don't recognize that they have an unconscious emotional attachment, especially to foods that are high in fat, sugar, and salt, because that's what we were given, you know, as yeah. so the really it. yummy stuff. I mean, I can think of a couple of dishes that my mom makes that I mean, just... You have an emotional attachment yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. Um, and I talked about how in my family, uh, because I grew up uh, you know, on a farm and we were, we were very active, that if we got stitches and we didn't cry, we won't even talk about how you should let children cry when they're stressed or, or whatever. But if we didn't cry and we were brave, we got ice cream. Mm. Oh, wait, <laughs> not so much. And so to this day, when I do something that's like really impressive or I feel like I'm brave my brain goes to, I should eat ice cream. No, I definitely should not eat ice cream, but I can feel that and feel like, oh yeah, that's because I have this unconscious relationship with ice cream and bravery. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's interesting to think about. Again, go back and, and watch the video if you want to hear more about that. Yeah. And then yesterday we talked about- A long one. A long, very long <laughs> time. Because, well, because I had lots to say um, about grit and using the ability to keep going and keep trying and keep focusing um, to succeed at your health. And I actually ended up yesterday, I told you I was done with the book. No, I wrote another chapter for the book about grit and about using grit. And that you don't have to have your own grit. You can actually use someone else's, like either a coach or a therapist or a friend, um, who believes in you and is, is willing to kind of cheerlead for you and can help you um, with, with your grit. And grit is the willingness to continue going even in the face of adversity. So continue trying, um, continuing with the effort. I wanna, I'm not gonna go, because if I get on this soapbox, I'll, I'll be go another for 20 like minutes. 20 minutes. So mm -hmm. I'm, not gonna jump, I'm not gonna jump on it, but you know, define your goals and then break it down into small parts. And like I said yesterday, you can move a mountain with a teaspoon if you're willing to be perseverant about right. it. So if you can, if you persevere, you can accomplish anything. The question is, what does it take for you um, emotionally, psychologically, and mentally to persevere? Right. And some of us um, have, you know, have grit. Russ and I talked about it that because we are former competitive athletes, we both do. We're both entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs have a lot of grit. Um, we go to the gym five days a week. Right, and we just we just do. It becomes mm -hmm. part of who we are. And some people don't. And that's but the fortunate thing is is that it's not either a talent you have or you don't. It's a learned skill. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have it, you can learn to have grit, especially if you work with someone or. Um, are you know close to someone who has it? It can kind of rub off on you. Exactly. So uh, I we're also talk. on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So please like and share. If you uh, like us or share or follow us on Facebook, make sure you go to notifications and select all posts. Otherwise, Facebook doesn't really want to show you our stuff. Don't know why we are really cool people. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you would think everybody would want to see it. Uh, I think that's it. Um, so. With that, I'm going to try and do this. Okay, so with that, <laughs> we will say eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. See you Monday.